Hi, my name is Paul Sachs from Brigham and Women's Hospital and Harvard Medical School. And today I'd just like to discuss briefly the revised opportunistic infection guidelines that just were published in the MMWR. This is really a substantial work, and it updates one that existed already. Uh, and I just wanted to say how useful it's been. It was actually released this summer in a, a pre-publication version for comment, and now the, the full version is, is out. Um, the major focus and the major changes in this uh, OI guideline document uh, are as follows. First, there's quite a bit of discussion of the use of antiretroviral therapy as a way to manage uh, opportunistic infections, uh, in particular for those OIs that don't have a specific antimicrobial therapy. One thinks of, in particular, things like progressive multifocal leukoencephalopathy or, to some degree, uh, things like cryptosporidiosis, um, capacity sarcoma. Uh, in addition, there's a discussion uh, in virtually every section on the uh, immune reconstitution inflammatory syndrome, uh, a condition which can be sometimes very difficult to manage, but as uh, data accumulate on, on that particular syndrome, it turns out that most cases when they occur uh, can be managed with adjunctive therapy and continued antiretroviral therapy. There's a section on the use of the new um, immune-based immune based diagnostics for diagnosing latent tuberculosis. Um, the management of hepatitis B infection has been updated, and, uh, in, and then also there's some uh, uh, greater detail about drug-drug interactions involving treating tuberculosis, in particular the use of rifamycin drugs. Now, this is a very, very big document. This is over 200 pages and over, um, over 1,000 references. And it would be impossible, of course, to read through all of it. But as a resource, it is phenomenal. There's extensive tables. All the dosing guidelines are in there. And really, uh, the CDC and IDSA and the people who put it together should be credited for this uh, substantial work. Um, if you're wondering what has changed between the summer release and uh, the current version, um, uh, I was able to speak with one of the people involved in, in putting it together. And he said the major change between then and now is that they have essentially said the same thing that the antiretroviral treatment guidelines have said, which is that patients uh, who are, need to be treated for hepatitis B uh, also should start uh, combination antiretroviral therapy so that the two are treated concurrently. Um, and in addition, a lot of the typographical errors were corrected. But otherwise, it's pretty much the same as the release in the summer of 2008. So uh, check out the opportunistic infection treatment guidelines. They're available online uh, at, at easeinfo.nih.gov, the place where the guidelines for treatment of HIV are also kept. Uh, and I want to thank you for uh, listening to this presentation today.